Initial Instrument Configuration The Nikon NPL 352 Total Station needs to be configured prior to being used to measure and record data or being used as a total station. Some settings are set once at the beginning of a job and cannot be changed. These items are referred to as job settings. They are set from within the menu screen under the Settings heading. To get to this, press the menu button and then either scroll down to the settings or press number 3 and press Record Enter. Items such as prism constants, temperature and pressure can be changed as equipment and conditions change. These are referred to as variable settings. These are set from within the hot MSR1 and MSR2 screens. To get to these screens, press and hold down MSR1 or MSR2. All settings should be checked prior to establishing a new job to prevent errors. Variable settings should be checked occasionally during use to verify that they have not been reset inadvertently. Next, we will discuss setting up a station. Setting up a station means establishing an instrument's location in a three-dimensional space. This location can either be set arbitrarily, where the user will establish a new grid reference system, or it can be tied into an existing grid reference system. This is one of the powerful attributes of a modern total station. If a new grid is to be established, some thought must be given before creating the first station. The desired orientation of the new grid will depend on a suitable backsite being selected. The backsite can be a prism or a reflector foil or even a Phillips head screw on a wall plate. The current consensus is that for urban search and rescue use, a grid that follows that of the structure being monitored is desirable. This requires that the zero azimuth or horizontal angle be roughly perpendicular to one face of the structure. The second item is deciding the basic coordinates of the station to be established. Keeping the coordinates for different axes substantially different, for example, a thousand for the x-axis, a hundred for the y-axis, and ten for the z-axis, will help prevent confusion when determining the magnitude and direction of any building movement. Remember that the station being created is a point on the ground below the instrument, so that the instrument can be removed and brought back into its position within the 3D grid established. Access the Station Setup menu by pressing the 7 key while in the BMS screen. In this Station Setup menu, there are seven choices to pick from. To see the final two, scroll through the menu items until you reach the second screen. In the initial Station Setup, we will use Option 1, Known Point. When re-establishing the location of a total station on an existing coordinate grid, it is preferred to set up over a previously established point. It is possible to establish a station on an existing grid at an unknown location. Pressing the 1 key or the Record Enter key when the known item is highlighted brings up the Input Station screen. If this was an existing coordinate grid with known points, it is easy to enter a known point and the total station would use the point stored coordinates. Since we are demonstrating how to establish a new grid, we will need to enter the station's known arbitrarily set coordinates. The total station is set to number all of the points sequentially. So we will start this station as 10. We will use XYZ coordinates of 1000, 100, and 10 feet. We will set the actual height of the instrument at 5 feet. Enter the ST as 10 and press Record Enter. This brings up the coordinate input screen for point 1. This means your first point. This is not the station number that you entered. Enter the value for X as a thousand feet and press record enter. Enter the value for Y as a hundred feet and press record enter. Enter the value for Z as ten feet and press record enter. At this time, we are not covering the use of the point codes, the CD entry. Therefore, this line can be left blank. Pressing Record Enter scrolls through and brings you back to the input station screen. 
the height of instrument is entered, and pressing the record enter key will bring back the backsight screen, which is needed to orient the coordinate grid we have just created. We have selected a point to use as a backsight on the structure we are going to monitor, which lies on a line roughly perpendicular to the structure. We will set the horizontal angle to this point to be our zero horizontal angle. To do this, we select Option 2, Angle, and press Record Enter or the 2 key on the numeric pad. Note that this backsight is not the same as a backsight in a traverse. This is the point that we are sighting to set our angle or azimuth to zero. If we were using a point known to the total station, we would enter the point's number on the line for backsight. It is not necessary for this to be a point with known coordinates, only a point that we can find again to re-establish the grid orientation. This being the case, we do not have to identify the backsight and can skip this entry by pressing the record enter key. We are establishing that this point lies on the zero horizontal angle, so enter zero for azimuth and press the record enter key. This brings up the screen which sets the orientation of the zero horizontal angle. The backsight point that has been chosen has been sighted through the telescope and the MSR key, which corresponds to the type of reflector being sighted, either reflector or reflectorless, is pressed. This measurement sets the horizontal orientation of the grid. Pressing the Record Enter key completes the station setup process. Note that when Enter is pressed, the coordinates of the backsight are not saved. This point must be measured and saved. The total station is now ready to measure and record points reference to a known grid with a known orientation. It is now possible to dismantle the instrument and reinstall it at this point, and knowing the backsight, be able to re-establish the total station relative to this grid in three dimensions.